Hello, YouTube. This is Umilzo3. We've made it to lesson 39 in the Java curriculum, where I'm essentially basically filming myself recording a set of YouTube videos where I'm demonstrating my knowledge and some advice when writing Java code. What we're going to talk about now, we're going to shift our attention a little bit away from object-oriented programming. We've spent about 15 or 16 or 17 lessons talking about person and doctor and student and person tester and occupation and lawyer and waiter and cool waiter and occupation tester. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new class called sorting. Because what we're going to do in the next three lessons is we're going to compare and contrast three sorting algorithms. And so basically, in computer science, we think about algorithms and we think about ways to achieve a particular task. And so one of the ones that comes up in the AP curriculum and sort of the introductory programming courses is to think about how to sort an array. So if you were given an array of ints or an array list of integer objects or something, and you knew that you could call the int value method on each of those integer objects, like we talked about in lesson 25 or 26, um, you would be able to you get so given an array or an array list of unsorted ints how can we come up with an efficient way to sort the elements in the array what is the procedure where we would basically file the elements so that the smallest ones appeared at the beginning of the list or the array and the largest elements appeared at the end and you could do that for any items that were sortable so i think in a future video remember that we talked about the compare to method that the comparable interface requires that any class that implements it defines. So we said person. And then when we were looking in the person class a few lessons ago, we were talking about how it needs a compare to method since it implements comparable in the class header. And so basically, we can sort any objects or items that are comparable. So person objects are considered comparable. If we went to the waiter class, remember waiter didn't really have any instance variables. So it sort of makes it hard to compare and distinguish waiter objects, but we just sort of had a silly one where we computed two different random numbers and just saw which of them was bigger. But this would be an example, right? You could basically sort, essentially, you could sort waiter objects, right? And you would just sort of figure out what the result of the compare to method would give you at each run. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to think about sorting an array events. And then in the future videos, we're going to sort more complicated things. So maybe we'll try sorting person objects according to what the compare to method gives at each run. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new class up here and we're going to talk about sorting algorithms, sorting algorithms. So you can just go ahead and create a new class called sorting. And we're going to be using this class for the next three lessons because we're going to create three methods in it or rather four. We're going to come up with the bubble sort method and then in the next video we'll talk about another algorithm called insertion sort which is going to have its own static method that accepts an int array and returns a sorted version of the int array and then we'll have a third method for the selection sort which we'll talk about in lesson 41 and then finally in and then we'll have a main method where we'll just test all this stuff out as we go through and then with the rate with searching algorithms we're going to do something similar so what we're going to do is we're just going to create a static method it's going to turn an array events and it's going to be called bubble sort and of course it'll need to accept an array events as well and so what we're going to do is we're going to say int result equals new int of array dot length and essentially what that does is it declares and initializes an array of however many integers however many zeros right and the number of zeros in result is going to be equal to the number of numbers, the number of ints in the array being passed in. So hopefully that's pretty clear to you what that line of code does. And if we want to practice having good Java documentation, I'd encourage you to rewind about 10 lessons where we talked about Java docs. But remember that we're going to go ahead in front of methods and important constructors and methods. We want to have good documentation for other programmers who might be inheriting our code. So we're going to do forward forward slash and then star star and then press enter kind of like for a traditional multi-line comment the only difference is you have a second star here and so you would do this method um sorts a a, a, um, a you know a potentially unsorted a generally unsorted array of int variables or, or array events okay um according to the bubble sort algorithm and so we're going to be talking about what the bubble sort algorithm does and how to write the code for it in the next 15 minutes and so of course what we also need to do is remember you need to have a description of any parameters any inputs that the method accepts and here in this stack in this method header we just decide to call it an array so it would be the unsorted version of the int array and then what you would do is you would say return 
um, a sorted version of the interarray. So basically another interarray with the same numbers as array, but sorted, right? And so hopefully that's clear to you. That's probably saying a little bit more than you actually need to. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that bubble sort is sometimes referred to as sinking sort, okay? And it's easy to understand the code. So it's, 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 it's a pretty um, simple um, algorithm, um, but, but it uh, performs poorly in the real world. So basically that means that it's inefficient. And even though it's easy for you and me to understand, maybe the things that make the most intuitive sense are not always logically the best, most efficient ways of doing something. So what we can do is we can say that bubble sort is basically going to repeatedly step through the list and it'll compare adjacent elements and swap them if they're in the wrong order. Okay. And so that pat the pass through the list is going to repeat until the list is sorted. Okay. And so basically smaller or large, smaller elements are essentially going to bubble to the beginning of the array. They bubble because it's sort of like a one at a time, right? You're syncing the smaller elements. And then the, uh, the larger elements are basically going to float towards the end of the array. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and write the code for it. And we should go ahead and have decent enough documentation so that we can understand what each of the lines does. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a for loop. So we're going to say for in y equals zero, y is less than either array dot length, or you could say result dot length at this point, because they're the same length. So you could say result dot length. It really doesn't make any difference. And then you could say something like y plus equals one or y plus plus or y equals y plus one. And then you're actually going to have a nested for loop. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a for loop within that for loop, but the Boolean is going to be a little different. And uh, we actually need to go, uh, apologies, we actually need to go to n minus one in the first loop. So you'll understand why, because um, basically if you get to the end of the list, then there would be no extra comparison to make. So um, because what happens is we're going to pass in an additional index position. So what we're going to do is we're going to do for in z equals zero, z is less than, and then it will be result dot length minus y minus one. Okay. And then z plus equals one. This is the code for the bubble sort. This is how you're going to get the method to operate so that the elements of your array can be sorted. This is the algorithm. This is the approach that it takes. So it iterates through one loop and then it iterates through another loop within that loop. And you can think about how many times this is going to run. So this result uh, runs, you know, result length time. So it would run, you know, if it's eight then it would run eight times, but then within that, this loop is going to run. Well, what would the first, what would the first run of Z be, right? So for Y equals zero, this would just run uh, result dot length minus one times, right? Minus one times, but then for y equals one, it would run result dot length minus two times. For y equals two, it would run result dot length minus three times, right? So it would run result dot length um, minus one minus y times, where y is the number iteration of the outer loop. So hopefully, hopefully that's sort of clear to you. Hopefully that's clear enough. Okay, but that's sort of an iteration of the outer. I'm just going to say the outer outer so for outer loop okay and then inside of the nested for loop you're going to have a boolean to check you need to go ahead and check a boolean so what you're going to do is you're going to look at the elements at those two index positions so you're going to be looking at basically z array of z and then the one to the right of z so you're going to be looking at if array of z okay is greater than array of z plus one so what you this is a boolean it's going to check to see if the element at the current index position is larger than the element at the next index position over. And if that happens, it needs to go ahead and do a swap. If you rewind all the way back to lesson four, we talked about the way to go ahead and switch two variables, the values of two variables in Java. And the problem with doing, you know, A equals B and B equals A is that after you say A equals B, A is already carrying B's value. So B wouldn't be able to take A's old value. And we said all the way back in lesson four that the solution to that is to have a third variable, what we call a temporary variable. So what you would do is you would say something like, uh, you know, you could call it anything you want. So you could say temp, sometimes they just call it temp. And you could just say array of Z, right? And then you would just assign array of Z to whatever array of Z plus one is. And then you would just assign array of Z plus one to the old value of array of Z which at this point is temp. We can't say array of Z because array of Z has already been defined to array of Z plus one. So this 
is the bubble sort. And so if you iterate through and you go ahead and run the iterations of the for loop, what you're going to see is this, this is going to make the proper swaps, right? So it's going to start at the first index position and then it's going to bubble everything else through, right? And then it will be looking at the next index position and bubble everything else through. And this is considered an inefficient algorithm. So you can look at this code here. It's really not that complicated. We just have a nested for loop. We have iterations happening within another set of iterations. And then as we iterate through that, we're simply just checking to see if one element is larger than the other element, in which case we would go ahead and swap them. And since this method is instructed to return an array of events, we would just go have to, and we would have to go ahead and say um, return. And then I guess what we actually need to be doing is switching. Um, what we need to be doing is we could actually just return array again, okay? Because what this would do is it would modify the interray, okay? So you actually don't need to create a separate array here. So what we're gonna do is you can actually remove this line of code and we can actually think about saving some memory, you know, saving up memory and taking up less Java memory. But then what you could do, you know, you could just go ahead and return array again, okay? So array is modified. Array is modified in this process. Okay, and then array is returned. Again, the same element that, that was brought in, but with the elements this time in the right position, in the right position, the right positions, okay? And so this would be a comment. Okay, so now what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and try this out. And remember when we talked about static methods, we said that we can call a static method before the static method is even defined. So just for practice on that, we can go ahead and we can go ahead and look at calling the main method, you know, before or using the main method before the bubble sort is even defined. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say public static void main string args, okay? We're just creating a sandbox method, a main method for our sorting class. And we're gonna be using this sorting class for the next two videos as well, because we're gonna be comparing this bubble sort algorithm against the insertion and selection sort algorithms. And remember, we have to change our for loop now because now instead of talking about this separate array, we decided that we were just going to modify the array that we passed in. So it would just be array dot length minus one and array dot length minus y minus one rather than result dot length minus one and result dot length dot y minus one, but result dot length minus y minus one. So anyway, anyway. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this out on some arrays. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and come up with a two dimensional array of one dimensional arrays. And so in that two dimensional array, we're gonna want each of these one dimensional arrays to be sorted. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna say in A1 is 8, 2, 3, 1, 4, 6, 7, uh, 9, 5. So obviously this array is pretty far from sorted. And then we're gonna go ahead and do another one with different numbers. So we could do 60, 30, 20, 40, 50, 70. 80, 10, 90, or something like that. And then we can have another one. Let's do one more. So we could do, you know, 300, 500, 200, 100, 400, 600, 700, 800, 900. So that one is like sort of starting to be sorted. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because this method is going to be able to handle any array. So even if you had passed in a sorted array, what would have happened if this array had already been sorted? It's going to go through, it's going to take a look at these two for loop iterations. And this Boolean would never be true. So it would never do a swap. And so it would just say, oh, Boolean is always false. Boolean is false, is false. Boolean is always false. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. And it would just returns the same, the same array as it was given. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a two-dimensional array. So I'm going to say arrays. Okay, we've seen two-dimensional arrays twice. First in lesson 16 or 17 in, in that escape sequences video after we, talk about, after we talked about the character class. And then also we saw it again briefly when we were talking about arrays of objects, right, in lesson 25. So we're gonna pass in just those three one-dimensional arrays, okay? And then I'm gonna wanna iter and then I'm gonna wanna basically sort them, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say for in u equals zero, u is less than arrays.length, u plus equals one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say arrays of u is equal to sorting dot bubble sort of arrays of view. So let's think about what this code does. We're calling the static method of the sorting class, which is where we are now. We wouldn't need to write this because we're in the same class as where the method was defined, but this is good practice, right? It's calling a static method of the sorting class. 
and it passes in arrays of view. What's arrays of view? Well, arrays of view is one of these interarrays that's being referenced at index position u within this two-dimensional array. And it says, you know what? Just go ahead and make the, L the array at index position u be the bubble sorted version of the array at index position u. So that is basically the work of sorting. You know, it's going to sort each of these arrays. You can think of it's basically three iterations, right? Because it has to go through the three arrays and then it has to go through each of the index positions in the array. And then for each of those index positions, it has to do the comparison with all the other elements. So you can think about the complexity here. And then what we want to do is we're just want, going to want to go ahead and print each of the arrays. So what we're going to do is we would basically say something like for int v equals zero, v is less than arrays.length, v plus equals one. It's going to be very similar, but this time we're just going to iterate through each of the arrays and iterate through each of the elements in this. So what, we're, we, what we could do is we could say system.out.println of array and then number and then v plus one. So you could say array number one, and then the sorted first array, right? And then array number two, and then the sorted first array, and then array number three, and then the sorted first array. And then what you're gonna do is you would say four int, and then you can call it number, you can call it anything that you want, and then you would say arrays of V. So you're looking at the, you know, the array, you're looking, this is arrays of V is an array. You're looking at the one dimensional array at index position V within your two dimensional array. And so you're gonna say for each of those numbers, I just want you to go ahead and print out that number. So you could say system.out.println of number, okay? And you could come up with a, you could come up with a whole number, whole nother static method, a whole nother void static method that could do all of this for you. So it could basically accept a two dimensional array of a one dimensional array of ints. And then you could go ahead and just copy and paste this code in here and it would be a void method that could run independently and it could print the result of running the bubble sort method on each of your one dimensional arrays in the two dimensional array that you passed in. But anyway, maybe we'll have time for that, but I'm just gonna go ahead and compile it, right? And then we can go ahead and run this. So if we run the main method of sorting and that's exactly what we get. So one through nine is sorted, 10 through 90 is sorted and 100 through 900 is sorted. And this is called an algorithm. This is a way of sorting an array. It's called bubble sort. And it's easy to understand the code, but it's not so great for the for Java. So then we're going to come up with ways for the program to do this a little bit more efficiently in future videos. But we have two minutes. Let's create one more static method. So what we're going to do is we're going to say public static void print sorted arrays. Okay, and it's going to accept a two dimensional array events. Okay, and then basically what you would do is you would just go ahead and run all this code. And then you could just go ahead and do that, right? So then you would go ahead and copy and paste this code here and you would just have to change the variables that the variable name agreed here. I guess we're just calling it array, right? So this array here and this parameter name and this method header is the two dimensional array that's being passed in here. And then it would just go ahead and to call the bubble sort. And then it would, you know, so I guess for printing the sorted arrays, you know, this would be a whole set, this would be separate now, right? So this would be, um, you know, sort and print sort and, pr and print arrays, right? And then you could go ahead and do that, right? So sort and print arrays, because this one sorts it and this one prints it. And then on this, in the main method, now you don't need any of this. You would just say, you know, you could call the static method. So you could say sorting dot sort and print arrays of arrays. And this is just another use of static methods. So we created a static method, which calls another static method within the class. And so that would sort and print those three arrays. And then you could go ahead and modify it again, right? You could add another array, you could add a smaller array, right? So now this is all dynamic and it's all gonna work the same way. So you do 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 3,000, 9,000, 7,000, 8,000, 5,000, 6,000, right? And you can demonstrate the point here. So now you just pass in a different array, right? It's a different, same function call, but with a slightly different input. It's a slightly different two-dimensional array now and you run the main method and now you get all four arrays and they're all sorted according to this bubble sort algorithm that we wrote here in this static method, which accepts an unsorted array and returns a sorted version of that array. So that's essentially the bubble sort algorithm. And again, again we're gonna see other ways to sort arrays. There's, this is not the only way. We're gonna talk about insertion sort and selection sort, and then we'll continue to talk about searching algorithms, ways to search for an element within a list 
and then wrap up with exceptions and maybe one or two other topics, but then that'll wrap up the Java curriculum. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that was helpful and interesting from UMILS03. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.